Welcome to Permanent Records. Yeah, I love it. It's nice. I love your shoes, bro. Shoes are amazing. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, what are you wearing right now? I'm having a Needles custom one-on-one for Don Tolliver Love Seek suit. Tokyo, Japan drip. So can people buy the suit? No, it's not out yet. It's a one-on-one. But it will eventually come out. Maybe. And what about the chain? Where is that made? Um, Johnny Dang, you know, from Houston, Texas. He's a Yeah, he's a Houston jeweler and um he made both of these, one for my last album and this is for my current album. And any significance? Um, Love Sick, you know, you know, Don rules the world. Love Sick around the globe and me and my girl, Angels. And you are Don? It's Oliver. Who are you? My name is Don Tolliver. I'm an artist from Houston, Texas. One of the most legendary you ever see. Don, welcome to Permanent Records in LA. Thank you. Right off the bat, Don, I have a gift for you. Speaking of Houston, Texas, a DJ Screw book. Thank you. I love Screw. What can you tell the people about DJ Screw? The importance of DJ Screw. DJ Screw was a visionary and a legend and you know, he, he taught people, you know, what it is and what Screw was all about. You know what I'm saying? Taking records and chopping them up and making them his own, making his own mixtapes and letting other people rap on them was his whole goal. And it was like, a, it's one of our main influences within the culture in Houston. In that book, there's a lot of Fat Pat and you sample Wonder Girl, Fat Pat. I love Fat Pat, man. R.I.P. the legend, the GOAT. One of the greatest of all time, Fat Pet. And on this new record, speaking of Canada, Wonder Girl, K Tronada. Yeah, K Tronada's amazing. I love him. He's just like a, a musical beast. Also, in this book by Lance Scott Walker, there is some OG Ron C. Oh my God, OG Ron C. He's, he's, he played, you know, OG Ron C was the first person to play one of my records on the radio when I was like, Probably like 2016 or 2015. OG Ron C been supporting from the jump. Thank you, Ron C. Now, also in the DJ Screw book, Big Mo is mentioned. The Bar Baby, man. Big Mo. Uh, Ace Town Superstar. If you know, if you know, man. Like, just one of those uh, one of those dudes that came from the H with that melodic soul and had that voice that ruled the nation. Shout out, Mo. And Don, I want to give you another gift of the DJ Screw variety, an original DJ Screw poster. This is amazing, bro. Thank you. I really love this. Like, where do you even get this type of shit? I don't think that's part of DJ Screw. So let's turn it back over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. But that's a gift for you, an original poster. Do you have much original stuff? There's been a lot of reissues. The Impala, like, <laughs> boy, we have not yeah, what do you think about that? It's amazing. Um, the car culture in Houston has always been our forefront, you know, so to see the Apollo on the joint screw, this cover is just crazy. Yeah, that's an original poster for you, Don. I'm a, I'm a glass frame, that bad boy. Thank you. No problem. I thought, well, you're from Houston. You love screw. Let's move on with more screw. The stressed out double LP. Jesus. Where's you? Hold on, bro. This one. Now, see, this one is crazy. Like, this something, like, I don't even know. Like, I show Big J this right now. Boy, I'd be like, hold up. This is crazy, bro. Nah, no, right. how did you even find this? This is, this is like life right now, for sure. Well, you are Don Tolliver. We have to bring you something. Dressed out with the bread. Jesus Christ. Is it true, Don, your mom bought you Easy Does It? Yeah, she did. She did. She did. That was like, I think that was like one of the craziest things she ever did. But she bought me that CD when I was real young, bro. And it changed me for sure. Easy is so crazy. His raps are just like beyond. But yeah, she bought me that CD when I was probably like 12 or 15 or something. How many moms would do that? That's pretty cool. My mom is a real OG, man. She's actually pulling up on me today. I can't wait to see her. And I have another gift for you, Don. New Jack City featuring Ice T. What's the importance of New Jack City? This dude right here. Nah, uh, 
This is amazing, bro. I ain't never seen a New Jack City of uh, vinyl. Oh, this is the soundtrack. This is crazy. New Jack City is crazy. It really embodies like a lot of like stylistic things that like I picked up over the years and me just like the cars. The way Wesley Snipes act in the movie is just all time legendary and just like I appreciate those type of films. And it's gone instrumental in there as well. Possibly for Don to rap over? Possibly for Don to sample. Don? It's Oliver. Your dad, Bongo. Track number 10. Swish House, Greatest Hits. Yeah, Swish House, Greatest Hits. Hold on. What you know about that Bongo? Well, I was curious about Bongo. Is it true he played on the Little Kiki record? Yeah, he did. He definitely did. My father. And I have a gift for you, Don. A sealed original DJ Screw record with Little Kiki. This is amazing. I love all the DJ Screw gifts, bro. Like, this is the type of stuff like people like me put in the house and really, you know, just sit and look at it. This is history. It's a piece of art. What can I say about Little Kiki? You know, we mentioned DJ Screw. What about Little Kiki and your dad? Kiki the Don, man, is one of the most undisputed Houston rap legends to ever live. Um, a lot of influence when I was coming up listening to Little Kiki. And my father is uh, is like is a crazy musician. He likes to sing. He's melodic, just like me. And uh, yeah, he's been down with Swisher House from the jump. And I noticed he likes backflips. Your dad can do backflips? Yeah, he can do a backflip right now. That's a great stage move. I ain't gonna lie, I can't wait to bring him on stage so he can do it. I've been waiting on that, actually. He'll probably do it this year. And he likes fishing, too? He fishes all the time. He's probably fishing right now. What about your neighborhood, Grove? Grove. Elm Grove, Elm Grove, man. Shout out Elm Grove. West Chase District, man. Southwest Ed Leaf, Texas. Elm Grove is a, is a little spot, you know, uh, when I was, when I was uh, growing up. I would always be hanging around all my friends to pull up the Grove. Sonny's Corner Store. Sonny's Corner Store. Hey, man, what you know about Sonny's, man? Sonny's is amazing. Sonny's is the corner store. I always go get everything I want from the hood. This is like down the street. We'd go over there, pull up, you know what I'm saying? Go get wraps, whatever you want. When we was like going to school, we always stop at the corner store, go grab a drink. Or when we get off the bus, we always go to the corner store and post up and like, you know. What sort of drinks would you get? Like, what did you get at Sunny's? I would, I would, man, sometimes I go crazy. <clears throat> sometimes I go crazy and do, like, a strawberry sun kiss. I might go crazy and get that cherry red Sprite. You know, that cherry uh, flavor Sprite. I might, I might go crazy and just, like, they always had different type of flavors at Sunny's. That's why we loved it so much. Yeah, I had all type of different, like, little exotic type. You had to know about it, though. You had to know. Playa Familia. Playa Familia. You guys worked so hard. Space Age Pimpin. What can you say about Space Age Pimpin? This is my brother right here, Young Josh 93. And this right here is like um, one of our first times we ever went to go perform. And it was like a uh, in a small intimate room. But it was like one of our first performances. Uh, Playa Familia was a, a group, me and Young Josh, came up with you know to kind of just take over the streets by storm you did a lot of promoting of your own music don do you have any tips like club running do you have any tips for club running i feel like if you're if you want to get your record spent in the club wait till the dj's done whatever they're doing and you know don't be too pressy about getting your record played it's a million records in the world bro you know just wait for your turn to get it played and respect the DJs man the DJs work hard just to you know feed their families spend records and work for whatever club they working for so show the DJs a little respect let them handle what they gonna handle pull up on them like yo I got this record what about parking where do you park when you club run you so funny oh uh, that's a crazy that that's a good one i honestly when you when i would have to go club run i would have to probably pay a parking the dude the, the, i used to go so much to the clubs and club run like the dudes would kind of already know my dj was in there and i just kind of wave them off and they'll like be like all right they'll probably charge my dj or something at the end of the day shout out doc but yeah but what about your car like you pull up in a, what sort of car should i have if I do some club running. Man, the kind of car I had, I had a black Mustang when I was doing my club running. I had like, I think it was like a 2009 or something. That was a bad boy, I tell you. I'm a bad boy, the Night Rider, for real. What were Bi Breezy shows like? It's wild, crazy. Um, Some of my first open mic shows with Jay and Josh, um, 
Those shows were crazy, you know. It was uh, definitely, definitely different. By Breezy Warehouse Show is amazing. Amazing. She still does them. Shout out by Breezy. Thank you, DJ Dundeal. DJ Dundeal, thank you, man. All those late strip club nights, my boy, or help me get a little, you know what I'm saying, uh, honey lemon uh, pepper chicken at the dream spot. You know, Dundeal was DJing at Dreams when I pull up late night, you know what I'm saying, had them songs banging out that joint. He'll order me up a chicken or a pasta. Shout out Dreams, man. One of my favorite strip clubs in Houston. And DJ Dundeal left some turntables at Dr. McDaniel's house. Yeah, I think he did. So thank you, Dundeal, for turning on DJ McDaniel. Because that's how it all started. That's how it all started. You'd fit. Lo-fi clothing. Oh my gosh, shout out Lo-fi. It was like one of my favorite places um, to go and shop, thrift, and like, I did my first pop-up there as well. Handing out CDs. Yep, handing out CDs. You handed out a lot of CDs and they sold your CDs. How hard is it? Like, it was nice of Lo-Fi to welcome you. How hard was it to find a place to welcome you? It wasn't that hard because we was always at Lo-Fi. You know, Lo-Fi is on the street called Montrose. And to me and my friends, it was always like a cool place to go link up, cool place to go shop. Tisa Korean. The legend. The strut. The visionary. What can you say about dancing? The strut. Tisa Korean. The strut. I don't know what the strut is, but Tisa knows how to dance. Well, you know how to dance, too. Like, you're dancing by the car? Is there a Don Tolliver dance? It is called Do the Fool. Can you demonstrate to dance at all? You got to pay for that. <laughs> Boom. Or just a little bit. Do the little. No, not quite. We're not quite there with Don. Tolliver. Don. SWAT. SWAT. I leave Texas. How is I leave Texas to be exact? The Funplex. Funplex, where plexing is going down. Now, what happens at the Funplex? You know, usually we go over there, roller skate. It's like the roller skating ring was really what it was. But, you know, people really just go out there, parking lot, chill. It's kind of like the, the main setup for, like, the young kids that want to just link up and hey, leaf. And I have a gift for you to bring it back to 1989, a Scarface 7-inch. I ain't gonna lie. When he was called DJ Action. I really like this. Thank you. And it also comes with two posters as well. What can you say about Scarface? It's got an instrumental too. Scarface is a real deal OG legend. Um, this poster is crazy. You know, when I first got hip to Scarface, I got hip through the Ghetto Boys. But as I just started to listen to more and more and more, I started to listen to solo projects and everything else, and I really love the song he has with Tupac. It's one of my all-time favorite songs called Smile. Now, that song was written by 3-2, and another Houston legend, some 3-2, a 3-2 7-inch. Shout out 3-2. I ain't never seen these guys in my life, but these guys look like they was lit. Some old school 1989. Trim. Boy, I'm finna play this. And also, it comes with a poster as well. What do you think about the old school Houston? Do you have much of that? Man, old school Houston. I like the R&B side, like H-Town, them boys like that. When you want to just get into some old school, you know, that's my flavor. Private identity. The MCM hats has got it. Them boys got them MCM hats on back there, I'm trying to tell you. Rest in peace, 3-2, but that's a gift for you. Thank you. Rest in peace, 3-2, OG. No, no cap. Thank you, Van Joe. Thank you, Van Joe. Yeah. He told you to sing. Yeah. Diva. What, what happened there? I mean, Diva, man, Joe's just one of those dudes that just like, yo, you need to sing more. Like, I, I, I used to rap all the time. I used to just like rap, 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 go crazy. But he'd always tell me, like, you need to sing more. You know how to sing. Like, sing, bro. So I just started doing it, and I went crazy with Diva. And he's a great photographer, too. He is a great photo photo journalist, photographer guy. And DJ Mr. Rogers. DJ Mr. Rogers, the legend, the one and only. And he made a Jeep for you? He didn't make it, but he definitely worked on it. I actually bought a car from him, though. How many cars do you have? I think uh, probably like six of them, I think. What did you buy from him? I bought a Red Beamer 635 CSI from him. And I thought, a gift for you, Don Tolliver, to go in all your cars and NWA air freshener. 
Trim. What do you think about air fresheners? Like, how do you keep your car fresh? I'm not going to lie. I went one day and I bought a bunch of air fresheners and I just ended up putting them in the garage and never using them. I love it when I have it in there, but the fact that I got to switch it out, I, I smoke in my car, so it's like, what's the point? One Life Clothing. One Life Clothing. Okay, yeah, shout out One Life Clothing, bro. You you tapped in a little too deep. One Life Clothing, Um, that is a group that um i know through bride breezy um and they would just always support you know what i'm saying and it's cool that you bring them up because they would always just support you know and show love to me and josh i have a gift for you some barbecue flavored chicken chips i ain't a crazy barbecue dude i'm not even gonna lie but i love this the, the bag the i never seen it before this is like some canada no it's actually from korea i'm gonna save these look at that chicken wing on it boy Oof. And also for dessert, a gift for you, Don, from Lucky's Bodega in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Some chip truffles. Do you eat these? From Thailand. Do you eat them? I haven't tried them yet. Yeah. Okay. What, what do you think about truffles? I, I like truffle, actually. But what is this? Lays from Thailand. Ta okay. Wow. Thank you, bro. I would love to see you. Take a bite. <laughs> well, I mean, what do you do with stuff like that? You kind of keep it like unopened or would you take a chance? What is Don Tolliver like to eat? What Like the turkey leg, the turkey hunt, the turkey hunt. <laughs> <laughs> the turkey leg. I like turkey leg. I like turkey leg. Huh? Oh, shout out turkey leg. Huh? But I mean, what I like to eat, man, I like chicken. I like chicken. I love nachos. I love tacos. Chicken. Chicken flavored. It's like barbecue, though. It's not like I'm like baked chicken, spicy seasoning you know i ain't really like sweet barbecue what about some of the other barbecue places though do you know some of the legendary barbecue places in houston like do you have a favorite like the pit room or burns barbecue do you have a favorite do you go to or do you know of do you recommend i like papa's barbecue i know it's a franchise i know you guys will hate me blah, 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 blah. i love papa's barbecue okay so you say what you want I'm going to Papa's. Now, Don Tolliver, here we are right now at Permanent Records in Los Angeles. But I was wondering your Canadian connections. My friend Robert was in a video with you. Robert? Who's Robert? Well, let's examine right now. This is Robert. Does this bring back any oh, memories? Uh, any memories? This would be one of your boys, huh? Now, what is happening here? I had to pull up on Robert, kind of like, just pulled up on him with the tool. Robert had to go. And Well, actually, let's turn over. What do we see right there? Jesus. Yeah, let's get a close-up on that. Yeah, yeah, Robert. I'm sorry, buddy. But uh, I pulled up on him with that tool. And there was a lot of blood. That was in the Jack Boys video, and he was a meth dad. Could you explain what happened there? There was a lot of blood. Um, I pulled up, I well, I guess in this scene you'll see me, this is from the Jack Boys movie, uh, short film, in this scene you'll see me sleeping in the back of this cab here, and I crawl out of the back while, while Robert isn't paying attention with his wife passenger side, and I blow his brains out, but it was for the movie. What's funny is Robert said, quote, I only knew about the fake blood right before. Wow, yeah, it was, it was, it was definitely a lot. It was a lot. I had to get in there like smear it. I remember it was a lot. Any words at all for Robert? Robert, thank you for being a G, bro. And, you know, you know, let me get my first little acting piece off because it meant a lot to me. Appreciate you, Robert. And I have a gift for you right here. Who do we have right there? A mint. Oh, my. This is Marvin. I see Marvin. Oh, hold on. What's this one? A mint Marvin Gaye from 1968. Whoa. This is crazy. These are the real Motown records. Yeah. From a jukebox. A jukebox distributor in Canada went broke and left those unopened for years. <sighs> what, what can you say about Marvin Gaye and Don Tolliver? Marvin Gaye like, really had the swag. Like, if you really paid attention to Marvin, he really had like real 
swag, real drip, and a real essence to him. A lot of people, like, I feel like a lot of artists back then were kind of like, they were like this big superstar that you really didn't really know too much about, and they were just glamorous when they would hit the stage and the outfits would be shining. But Marvin was like, you knew Marvin was really battling with his own self and his music and the things he had to go through on a daily basis and he wanted to do more and you kind of felt that within him. That's why I kind of gravitated towards Marvin maybe more than the rest. Quote, I will take the stars out of the sky for you. For me? Yeah, for me. Kali Uchis. Kali Uchis. And I have a gift for you to give Kali some April March. She loves April March. This is April March's first band, The Shitbirds from 1992, and also an April March CD compilation from 2022. Hold up for that Kali Uchis, huh? Look. Yeah, exactly. He got you, baby. Look, Trim, I'm going to bring it home. Terry. What can you say about Kali Uchis on your record? She's amazing. And she I love her artistry. Her artistry is beyond. She's actually dropping a project tonight, so I'm very excited. So here we are at Permanent Records in Los Angeles. Now, Don, you've brought a crew with you. Who's in the audience right now? What crew do you have there? Uh oh. Who can we point to? We have Caroline. She's she does helps me with all my um, internet logistics, my workings. We have my day to day manager here, Miss Aaron. We have my de- my personal assistant, my homeboy, my brother here, Marley G. And we have my boy Rudy. Yeah, you see that fist? He put that fist up. You know what's going on? What can you say about this doll right? Here. <laughs> oh, where my nigga at? at? Where is that at? <laughs> oh, hey, hey, let me give my boy a record. Hold on. So what's going on here? Just, in, you know, man. could you please explain to people? Man, this right here is Chase Bizzle, man. Chase B, the one and only, the legendary. But it doesn't stop with Chase B. It also continues on right here with what exactly is going on here? Because people are probably wondering. Yeah, man. Kimmy, I forgot what we had did this for, but I ended up doing it. I wanted to do it for, like, I think my last album, and I ain't never did nothing with these boys. These boys really be scaring me low-key. I ain't, I ain't, Kimmy done had them. Amazing dolls. Thank you, bro. It was like escapism? Escapism, yup. Like you and Chase B. Could you explain a bit about the project? So, yeah, me and Chase, man, we were working on this project that we were never able to really just all the way finish. Maybe one day we pick it back up. But, yes, this album that we were working on is called was called Escapism. Now Chase B is working on his own solo project that he's about to drop here shortly. But, yes, we were working on a project together, and hopefully we'll be able to pick it back up. And I have a gift for you. Uh, troop vinyl with a mix by DJ Clark Kent, who Chase loves. Yeah, he loves Clark Kent. Uh, so if you could pass that on, please. I got you. Anything else, Don, you want to add to the people out there at all? I love Narwar. He's great. See, this guy is amazing. Look at the gifts. This is amazing. Thank you. Well, thank you for the kind words. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you. Why should people care about Don Tolliver? Why should people care? Because I care. I feel like it's a lot of artists out here that, you know, don't really care, just really want to put out music to just, you know, get somewhere or to try to, like, make it a fad or to, you know, be cool. I really make music that comes from my heart my soul, and I want people to be able to live their life and experience whatever they whatever experience through listening to the music. So that's why I feel like you should care. Well, thanks so much, Don. Keep on washing your hands in the free world and do... Do 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 yeah